Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Ryzen Powered 1X Player Mini. So on the channel, we've actually taken a look at the 1X Mini in the past, but it was the Intel version powered by the Intel i7-1195G7. It actually offered some pretty great performance given that that CPU could turbo up to 5 GHz, but with that, we only had 4 cores and 8 threads. But when it comes to the new Ryzen powered 1X Player Mini, this is actually using the Ryzen 7 5800U. 8 cores, 12 threads with built in Radeon Vega 8 graphics up to 2000 MHz. In this video, we're going to take a look at the unit, we'll run some benchmarks, test out some PC games, and some emulation, but when it comes down to it, I've always been a big fan of the 1X Player line. Its bigger brother has an 8.4 inch screen, and by the way, they have released one with the 5800U, but in this video, we're taking a look at the mini version with a 7 inch display. Aesthetically, this has stayed the same from the Intel version. We've got all the buttons we need up front here, dual analog sticks, we've got linear rockers around the back, and like I mentioned, I'm a big fan of this design. I think it's very comfortable to hold, and when it comes to our layout, over here on the left-hand side, we've got our D-pad, our left analog stick. It does have L3, so we've got that extra function button there. We also have a dedicated Windows Home button, and up top, we've got Select. Moving over to the right-hand side, we've got our Start button, A, B, X, Y, our right analog stick, and two extra buttons here. Now the upper button is our on-screen keyboard button. If we tap it once, it'll bring up an on-screen keyboard. If we hold it and let that little LED come on, it'll actually turn the built-in controller into kind of a mouse setup. The lower button is a function button, which will increase the fan speed on this, and they are planning their own proprietary app that'll take advantage of this function button. Unfortunately, it's not ready at the time of making this video. Taking a look at the top of the unit, we've got our shoulder buttons and our trigger buttons. These are linear triggers or analog triggers, so if you just pull it a little bit, it'll give you a little bit of input. Really nice, and they do work very well. Taking a look at the I.O. up here, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port and USB Type-C, which is 3.2. It will support display out, and it also supports up to 65 watt fast charging for the built-in battery. On the bottom here, we have another USB Type-C port. This is also 3.2, so overall this will support up to three displays, the built-in display and dual displays over USB Type-C. And finally, taking a look at the back of the unit, kind of plain Jane here, don't have any extra buttons going on, but we do have our intake vent for the built-in cooling system. Moving over to the specs, like I mentioned, this is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 5800U. We've got eight cores, 12 threads, with a base clock of 1.9 gigahertz and a boost up to 4.4. This does come with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X running at 4,266 megahertz. The base model here has a 512 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, and it is an 80 millimeter drive. You can get in there and replace it if you need to. It's got built-in Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, a 12,600 milliamp hour battery with 65 watt fast charging capabilities, and it does come with a 65 watt charger in the box. And when it comes to the display, it looks like they have two different models, one with a 1200p display, so it'll be 1920 by 1200, or you can opt for the one I have here, which is an 800p display. It's 1280 by 800, and it does look really good. Both of them use an IPS panel that does have some really vivid colors. And real quick, before we jump into testing, I did want to give you a quick comparison between the size of the Steam Deck and the One X Player Mini. As you can see, the Mini does come in a lot smaller than the Steam Deck, and by the way, I just got a skin on my Steam Deck here, but it's definitely a much smaller handheld console. Jumping right into a little bit of gameplay, first up we have Forza Horizon 5, 800p, low settings, and we're at 15 watts. The stock TDP on this is around 20 watts, but I've taken it down just to keep it on par with other handhelds on the market right now. It will run this really well at 800p low settings. We get an average of around 63 FPS at 15 watts, and if you want to take this up to 30, you can get an average of around 74. But remember, taking that wattage up will decrease the battery life on this. At 15 watts, we can expect around 2 hours and 40 minutes of gameplay. At 30 watts, it's going to cut that right in half. Alright, so before we jump into testing, I wanted to show you the stock TDP here. I'm going to run a stress test, and with core temp, you can see it jumps up to 25, and then it'll back on down to 20. So we basically have a 20 watt TDP right out of the box, but this can be fully adjusted up to 45 watts. But obviously it's going to burn a lot more power, and in turn you'll get much worse battery life. So for the game testing in this video, I'm going to back this down to 15 watts across the board. That way we're kind of on par with what the Steam Deck is putting out and battery life. 
But before we move over there, the first thing I always like to do is check out some benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5. So this was run at the 20 watt TDP setting. We've got a single core of 1429, multi 7835. Taking it down to 15 watts does decrease that multi-core score by quite a bit. But we're keeping on par with the single core here. It just kind of shows you the scaling that can go on from 15 to 20 watts here, at least on the CPU side of things. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, and at 15 watts, we get a total score of 14,992. But as soon as we take it back up to that 20 watt TDP with the 25 watt boost, we get a total score of 16,527. So obviously, throwing a little more wattage at this APU does increase performance on the CPU and the GPU side of things, but the very last one I ran here was just Fire Strike at the stock 20 watt TDP. We got a total score of 3,971. So, I mean, these are on par with all of the other 5800U devices that I've really tested. But now it's time to jump into some more real world PC gaming. All right, so like I mentioned, we're gonna have the TDP set at 15 watts. If you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you can see we're right there 14.9, 15.1. And with that 15 watts, it's gonna share it between the CPU and the GPU side of things. We can't get those maximum boost clocks on the CPU and GPU at 15 watts, but it still does a pretty decent job. Control, 800p, low settings, we're getting an average of around 37 FPS. Next up, we've got Fortnite, still sitting at 15 watts. We're at 800p medium settings, and most of the time I use the performance setting or the performance backend, but this time we went with DirectX 11. Fully playable here, we get an average of around 74 FPS, but lock and V-Sync on is going to take that power consumption down, and you'll have a great experience playing this. Cyberpunk 2077 really works these APUs, and at 15 watts at low settings, with FSR set to performance, only nets us around 42 FPS. But at 30 watts, we can get an average of 58. This thing actually handles God of War quite well. We're at 800p original settings. FSR is set to balance, not performance. We could get a little more out of it at performance, but it does degrade the quality of the picture. 15 watts here, looking really good. We're getting an average of 38 FPS. And taking this up to 30 watts with the same settings gives us an average of around 47 FPS. And finally here for the PC game side of things, we have Elden Ring. 800p, low, 15 watts, we're only getting an average of around 34 FPS. When it comes to the Steam Deck, at 15 watts, same exact settings, that average is around 42. Moving over to some emulation, I've always had really good luck with Zen 3 and emulation, especially the 5800U. Here we have PS2 using PC SX2, Ratchet and Clank, I'm using the DirectX 11 backend at 720p, running at full speed. The 5800U in this thing offers awesome PS2 emulation performance. And the same goes for GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. We don't even have to pull 15 watts out of this while running the Dolphin emulator with the Vulcan back in at 720p. Now some games might jump up there, but as long as the game's compatible with the emulator itself, it's gonna run at full speed on this unit. Moving over to PS3 emulation using RPCS3, Vulcan back in 720p, Tekken 6. Not the hardest one to emulate, it does pretty good on lower end chips, and even at this lower TDP, we can run this at a full 60 FPS. Really great performance, but there are games that are going to struggle at 15 watts. Here we have Skate 3. This just loves those extra cores, threads, and a higher clock, so uh, at 15 watts, it's just not going to cut it. But we do have the ability to take this on up. I mean, we can go up to 45 watts on this unit. Definitely kind of pushing it for a handheld. But at 35, we can run this harder to emulate game at full speed. So overall, with the 5800U version of the 1X Player Mini, it does perform pretty well, even at 15 watts. With this APU, you definitely want to take it up a little bit just to get the maximum performance out of it, which will decrease battery life. And at 15 watts, playing AAA games that can utilize all of that wattage, I get around 2 hours and 45 minutes of battery life out of this thing. It's got that 48 watt hour battery. 
but taking it up to 30 watts or even 35 will significantly decrease that. You can expect around 1 hour and 15 minutes, and it's kind of a given. I mean, we're pulling 30 watts plus the screen and everything else going on, and we only got a 48 watt hour battery. So it's really up to you. I mean, you can sacrifice that battery life, up the TDP on this, and get better performance out of basically everything that we saw in this video. Or you can keep it low at 15 and get the maximum battery life that we can out of this thing. When it comes to the design, big fan of the Mini. I've always liked the 1X player design, even with its bigger brother with that 8.4 inch screen, but that one comes in much larger and it is a lot heavier than the Mini. So if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see running on the Ryzen powered 1X player Mini, even at a higher wattage, let me know what it is in the comments below. I'm not opposed to making another video as long as the interest is there. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.